The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has detected extremely high levels of radiation on some of its storage tanks. Officials of Tokyo Electric Power Company announced on Saturday that high levels of radioactivity were found in four areas in the complex where tanks containing contaminated water are located. The utility has been monitoring more than 900 storage tanks since about 300 tons of radioactive wastewater leaked from a tank on August 20th. TEPCO officials say one of Saturday's readings was 1,800 millisieverts per hour. Radiation at this level can kill a person in four hours. In another area, radioactivity of 230 millisieverts per hour was measured at a puddle underneath a pipe connecting tanks. No change in water levels was detected at the tanks, but TEPCO believes new leaks are possible. It's checking whether contaminated water has reached the ocean. The people in charge of Japan's crippled nuclear plants say they're facing their worst crisis since the triple meltdown at the facility. Every day, hundreds of tons of water accumulate inside Fukushima Daiichi. Hundreds more are believed to be seeping into the ocean after becoming contaminated with radioactive particles. In this edition of Nuclear Watch, we're looking at the latest on the effort to bring the situation back under control. Workers at Fukushima Daiichi have struggled to stop radiation from escaping into the environment ever since the 2011 earthquake and tsunami wrecked the facility. One of the main sources of contamination is the groundwater that flows from the mountains into the nuclear plant. Government officials used Tokyo Electric Power Company data to estimate the extent of the problem. They said approximately 300 tons of water was filtering through the site until early this month, becoming laced with radioactive materials and then seeping into the sea. Another factor is the ever increasing amount of water accumulating inside damaged infrastructure. Once it makes its way into reactor buildings, it mixes with radioactive isotopes. For months, TEPCO workers have been pumping up 400 tons of water every day and storing it in tanks on site. TEPCO officials say they have about 1,000 tanks containing almost 340,000 tons of water. They say they're at nearly 90% capacity. Last week, Workers detected a major leak in one of those tanks. About 300 tons of water escaped, releasing several quadrillion becquerels of radioactive particles. It was the worst single leak since the immediate aftermath of the 2011 accident. There have been four instances of leakage from these tanks in the past, but the latest is the largest to date. NHK World's Ken Ichiro Okamoto has been covering the recent leaks at Fukushima Daiichi. He tells us why the situation is so serious. Inspectors measured radiation levels around the storage tank that leaked. They detected up to 100 millisieverts per hour. A worker exposed to these levels would reach his annual exposure limit in just 30 minutes. Nuclear regulators rated this single leak a level 3 incident on an international scale that classifies nuclear events. Plant managers still don't know the exact cause, but experts question the design of this type of storage tank. They're made of steel plates bolted together rather than welded. A resin sealant is supposed to prevent contaminated water from seeping out. Some experts say this is the tank's main weakness. There are about 300 of them on site. We have learned that TEPCO workers didn't keep any records of visual inspections of the tanks. In addition, 
They didn't equip some tanks with devices to detect changes in water levels. Managers say they'll put these devices in all the tanks. And they say they'll send inspectors more regularly. They have also promised to replace the bolted tanks with more reliable welded containers. TEPCO executives are promising to set up a special task force to deal with the contaminated water issue. And they say they will invite experts from outside Japan to help them tackle the crisis. TEPCO engineers are trying to tackle the root of the problem by limiting the inflow of groundwater into the plant. They have been drilling wells between the mountains and the reactor buildings to capture some of the water before it reaches the site and becomes contaminated. And they are also digging wells along the coast to pump up tainted water to try to limit the leakage from inside the buildings. But it's not clear how effective all these efforts will be. One thing is clear though. TEPCO seems incapable of dealing with this problem on its own. Now, Japanese government will fund an underground wall to isolate the facility. The government needs to take charge entirely. The Japanese government is trying to dispel concerns regarding the situation at Fukushima Daiichi. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has approved a $470 million budget to deal with the accumulation of hundreds of thousands of tons of contaminated water at the plant. The funds will be allocated to enclose the site behind a barrier of frozen soil, a method whose effectiveness has yet to be demonstrated. NHK World's Mikiko Suzuki reports. An estimated 1,000 tons of groundwater is flowing from nearby mountains towards the plant every day. About 400 tons sweep into the basements of the damaged reactors where the water becomes highly contaminated. TEPCO engineers are trying to stop the inflow of groundwater into the plant, but the company has been struggling to control the situation. Experts say about 300 tons of contaminated water ends up in the ocean every day. In addition, several leaks have been detected in storage tanks. The Japanese government has decided to intervene. We've drawn up a basic plan to solve the problem of contaminated water instead of reacting to each new problem as it arises. Engineers plan to freeze the soil around the site. Crews would bury pipes underground. They would then circulate coolants at a temperature of minus 40 degrees Celsius. The frozen soil would act as a dam to prevent groundwater from seeping into the plant. But the effectiveness of this method remains unclear. It has never been used on such scale in Japan, nor tested over long periods of time. Local people have been briefed on the government and TEPCO's measures to deal with the contaminated water. Many fishermen voice their frustration at the way the situation is being handled. Enough already. Which do you think is most important, your company or the Japanese public? The chairman of the Nuclear Regulation Authority says there may be no alternative to releasing some of the water into the ocean after filtering out radioactive particles. The government and the expert panel are trying to restore trust with the fishermen and locals, but they admit that it may take some time. Mikiko Suzuki, NHK World. Japan's government is to compile a basic plan on Tuesday to deal with a leak of radioactive water at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. We shouldn't leave this problem to the plant operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company. From now on, the government will play an active role in dealing with the problem. 
Previous measures TEPCO took were made on an ad hoc basis, and we now need to take drastic steps. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga says the government will do all it can, including using reserve funds. He says the government plans to present a comprehensive package of measures on Tuesday at a meeting of, of its nuclear disaster task force, which includes all cabinet members. Contaminated water leaked from a storage tank at the plant, and some of it may have entered the ocean. TEPCO detected a radiation level of 1,800 millisieverts per hour near another tank on Saturday. That much radiation can kill a person within four hours after exposure. Workers at Fukushima Daiichi have been taking a closer look at tanks used to store radioactive water from the plant. Now they say they may have figured out why radiation levels near some of the tanks are rising. They say the seals inside the tanks appear to have failed. Over the weekend, workers at the plant discovered high levels of radiation near the bottom of three of the tanks. The readings were highest where the tank's steel plates are bolted together. Workers then noticed that resin was pushing out from inside. The resin is used on the tank's inner seams. It expands when soaked with water. TEPCO officials believe wear and tear caused the resin to extrude from the joints. They say there's no sign that any water has leaked out. And they say radiation levels are not high on the ground beneath the tanks. Workers began monitoring radiation more closely last month. They had found that 300 tons of radioactive water had leaked from one of the storage tanks. Earlier this week, workers discovered a high-level beta-ray radiation near a different tank at the plant. Japan's leaders have drawn up a plan to address the crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They watch as workers have tried to deal with a buildup of radioactive water. They're earmarking about 21 billion yen $210 million to try to solve the problem. They'll use the money to decontaminate the water and to try to contain leaks. They plan to do that by freezing soil around the damaged reactors. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga will lead a panel overseeing work at the plant. The panel will take charge of decommissioning the reactors. The members have promised to improve communications with workers and officials from plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company. The head of Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority says it will legally oblige TEPCO to address the leaks. He criticized people at the utility for continuing to make quick fixes. Shuichi Tanaka discussed the leak of 300 tons of radioactive wastewater from a tank last month. He said reports on what caused it, how it happened, and how much water got out are only estimates. He then suggested one possible approach. We might have to consider releasing some of the radioactive wastewater that is below the safety limit into the ocean. Nuclear power plants around the world have been doing so, as a matter of fact. But first, we have to purify the wastewater from the Fukushima plant to that level. Tanaka said if the people in charge of the plant release the wastewater, they'll have to explain what they're doing. He said higher concentrations of tritium and strontium were found in groundwater samples in May. He said tritium levels were higher near the beach, suggesting groundwater was seeping into the ocean. Japanese leaders are taking charge of the effort to address the crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Their facility is generating 400 tons of contaminated water every day, partly due to ground water seeping into damaged reactor buildings. Officials have approved a plan to spend about $470 million to deal with the problem. They'll use the money to decontaminate the water and to try to contain the leaks. They plan to do that by freezing soil around the reactors. We've drawn up a basic plan to achieve a fundamental solution to the problem of radioactive water instead of reacting to each new problem as it comes up. Abe said people around the world are watching whether Japan can successfully resolve the Fukushima crisis. He pledged that his administration will make an all-out effort. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga will lead a panel of government ministers to oversee work at the plant. Officials will be stationed near the site to improve communications with workers and with the plant's operator. People in Fukushima are angry with the way TEPCO has handled the leaks. Three have filed a criminal complaint against the company and its top management. TEPCO's management feared bankruptcy 
and kept putting off the necessary measures. Such negligence went on for about two years, resulting in the current situation. And the company didn't tell the government that conditions were critical. Kawai says his clients accused TEPCO and third executives of violating anti-pollution regulations. President Nami Hirose is one of the people named in the suit. The plaintiffs accuse Hirose of failing to take adequate protection measures because of the high cost. They say TEPCO's management approach didn't change even after the nuclear accident. TEPCO officials declined to comment. Japanese leaders are moving to control a contaminated water leak at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They've already come up with a plan to build a frozen artificial wall underground. It's part of a test to stop groundwater from seeping into reactor buildings. Government officials estimate about 400 tons of groundwater is flowing into the contaminated buildings every day. The inflow is adding to the problems of toxic wastewater on site. Tokyo Electric Power Company released video footage of the groundwater for the first time. It shows water flowing into the number one turbine building. Engineers plan to drive steel pipes 30 meters into the ground near the reactors. Then they'll pump liquid calcium chloride at minus 40 degrees Celsius to freeze the soil, creating a wall. They say they want to start the test by mid-October at the earliest. They're planning to check any impact on the surrounding soil and groundwater, as well as how best to replace pipes over the long term. Officials at the Tokyo Electric Power Company have warned of a potential new problem at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They say radioactive water that leaked from a storage tank last month have, uh, or may have merged with groundwater. TEPCO says it collected samples of groundwater from a monitoring well about 10 meters from the faulty tank. Tests showed the water contained high levels of radioactive substances. Last month, TEPCO discovered more than 300 tons of contaminated water had leaked from the tank. Company officials said some of that water may have reached the sea. Evacuees from Namiya town, which is in the Fukushima no-go zone, have expressed mixed reactions to the prosecutor's decision. They've been forced to live outside the town due to high levels of radiation. I cannot understand why no one has been indicted for what happened in Fukushima or why prosecutors should be in a position to decide culpability. I'd like the prosecutors to investigate the politicians who approved the construction of the plant and the people who dealt with the accident. Authorities should focus on helping evacuees rather than finding out who is responsible for the accident. The head of the International Atomic Energy Agency has set his sights on Fukushima. He says inspectors will visit the crippled nuclear plant to investigate a leak of radioactive water. IAEA chief Yukia Amano was speaking at a board meeting in Vienna. The leak of contaminated water at Fukushima Daiichi is a matter of high priority that needs to be addressed urgently. The agency's experts visited in April to check up on the plant's decommissioning. Amano said they recommended effective measures for the long-term management of liquid waste. Japanese leaders have committed $470 million to the toxic water leak. They plan to isolate the plant from groundwater with a wall of frozen soil underground. The announcement by the Japanese government of a basic policy for addressing this issue is an important step forward. Japan's UN ambassador Toshiro Ozawa spoke to the IAEA board. He said Japan will keep them updated and cooperate fully. The government is gearing up to deal with the leakage. A panel of cabinet ministers has held their first meeting to accelerate a solution. We are gathering all the available knowledge from experts both at home and abroad to create an effective solution to the contaminated water issue. The government has already decided to spend about $470 million of taxpayers' money to deal with the issue. The panel has decided to identify potential risk factors and compile necessary countermeasures before the end of this year. 
Japanese officials have filled in some of the details of their plan to deal with the crisis. They provided an outline of it to members of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Japanese leaders approved the plan last week. Ambassador Toshiro Ozawa presented it at IAEA meeting in Vienna. He said the build-up of radioactive water is the most urgent issue. People in other countries, especially Japan's neighbors, are concerned about the problem. I understand they expect us to carry out the plan successfully, and they want us to keep them up to date about the situation. Japanese officials plan to update the IAEA next week about the current situation at the plant. And we'll have more on some of the challenges in Fukushima a little later in the hour. Officials will have their work cut out for them in Fukushima. The operator of the nuclear plant says contaminated water from a leaked tank may be spreading. Workers detected a spike in the level of radioactivity in groundwater near the container. Engineers with Tokyo Electric Power Company estimate that more than 300 tons of contaminated water leaked last month from a storage tank near the number four reactor. They say some of it may have seeped into the ocean through a drainage system. On Sunday, workers collected water from a new well that they dug near the tank. They found 3,200 becquerels of strontium and other radioactive substances per liter. That's five times higher than levels found last week in a sample taken from another well. Workers are planning to dig more wells to determine the extent of the contamination.